put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version and the link is in the description box. Guardians of the Galaxy 3D Mood Review. Peter Quill, or Star-Lord as he likes to be called, call himself, is a an outlaw basically and he steals an orb which everybody wants and it turns out that some of the people who want it are working for Ronan the Accuser and they want it really badly. He ends up in prison with the other members of the the team that they become and the the five of them form an uneasy alliance to deal with the orb. It over the course of the film, they realize that the orb is too dangerous to let Ronan get his hands on, and yeah, they they come together gradually. Now, I have not seen Chris Pratt in much of anything since Everwood. I did see him in Wanted, but he does appear to favor roles that, you know, that live up to his last name. And, you know, when he meets Gamora, his downstairs talks to his upstairs, and you know how it goes. Now, the he's, he's kind of described as Han Solo meets Marty McFly, and yeah, I can very much see that. The, I suppose I should talk about the rest of the characters. I think that pretty much covers it for Peter. But yeah, basically he, he's an outlaw. He works for this, he works with this group of space pirates and yeah, he doesn't, he basically just wants a reward. Now, and, and I should say, one of the first big action scenes is actually him fighting some of the other members-to-be of the team. And it's a really good way to show what the different people can do and some of their dynamics and just, yeah, the, the whole... It, it works good as a setup for several different things. You know, why, why have your good guys fighting bad guys to establish them when they could be fighting each other? And, you know, another member of the team is Gamora, the green, you know, Zoe Saldana, who, you know, she, she appears to just be you know, have a list that she's crossing off of, you know, monocolored alien girls. That's racist. And she she insisted that Sophie Saldana insisted that it be makeup and not CGI or motion capture. She is the only survivor of her race and she's an adopted daughter and used to work for Thanos but then she took an arrow to the knee yeah she is really trying to be moral and that's part of what why she's trying to get away from Thanos 
and there's this nice little sibling rivalry go sibling rivalry going on with her and her stepsister Nebula, who's basically her jealousy has driven her to be sadistic and evil. And the their their relationship is one of the things that sadly does not get enough time from the there's basically there's a bit too much for one movie, but I'll get more into that. We have Drax the Destroyer, who's basically Conan, the barbarian, not the O'Brien of space. They even approached Jason Momoa, and he turned it down to not be typecast. He wants revenge on Ronan for the murder of his family, and it's the 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 guy is like a wrestler in real life so it's he doesn't have a lot of acting credits but he does rather well here and the he he talks somewhat like thor very you know big proclamations and such and <laughs> basically he takes everything literally you and I do mean that literally. It's you know, it's, it's, I hate when people say, you know, they mean figurative, but they say literal. You know, this guy, everything is literal, and they get a lot of good comic relief out of that. Then you have Rocket the Raccoon, and I add the rack mainly to not be Cartman. Love those episodes. He's basically this angry, bitter, little cyborg raccoon thing that he's, because he's the only of his kind and because he, yeah, he, he is this, you know, made specifically to be this being that, yeah, makes him very angry. And I actually I haven't seen Bradley Cooper in very much either since you know when he was Will on Alias, digging up on Danny, found out he was wearing a rich wristwatch. That's weird. Danny was English. Anyway, the basically he yeah he's he's an expert marksman and tactician. And then we have Groot, who is basically a an outer space tree ant. He he is loyal to Rocket, and he can regenerate most wounds like a plant. He can change form and size. There's a lot of R two D two going on with it. he can only say the words "I am Groot" in that order, and yeah, there are a lot of times where they're like, well, I know that's what you're saying, but, yeah, like with R2-D2 and such, he's this big, lovable guy. He's naive, but his heart is in the right place. He really does want to help and just throws himself into any endeavor. Now, I, I don't like Mark Vincent, or as he likes to be known, Vin Diesel. And when I heard that, you know, he he only, it's only a three-word role here, but he did do over a thousand recordings of it. And Bruce Lee has a quote about not fearing the man who's practiced 10,000 kicks once, but the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. So, nevertheless, he actually does do pretty well. If everybody does quite well in this, there's really no bad character or bad actor. Now, the the the, the group of characters and actors is you know, it's a strange group of actors for a strange group of characters. And the one thing I did 
think early on when once this was announced was that there are too many major characters for just one film. How could they split up the the time focus, you know, equally between these, you know, different characters with fairly varied backstories? Wouldn't it just be, you know, every X Men movie other than Days of Future Past, and it isn't, but it still does have a bit too much going on. It's, it's, excuse me, it's somewhat like if you watch the, excuse me, if you watch the Avengers and you haven't watched a single of the other movies, it, there's so much to try to establish and so many different, yeah, it's just, it's, The, it do, it pulls it off rather well, but there is still this problem, weakness built into the, the the core, and they can only do so much to you know avoid that. Now the. I suppose. Oh, I actually on Groot. I guess he forgot his rank and serial number because. Can I say his name? Yeah, that's a terrible joke. Now this is very much a Silver Age creation. Even just the characters themselves, something this silly could only have come from the Silver Age. And yeah, I'm I'm glad to see it up on the screen. It's. <laughs> it's it's glorious. It's very Saturday morning cartoon, and yeah, it it really captures that thing of you know it's it's it is a comic book. Now the this. This brings in the Nova Core and the we get some more of the collectors, some more of Thanos. And it's it's fantastic. Now the among the villains is I don't remember the character's name, but Jimon Hansu, who basically like he, he took this role because like his kids said, you know, I wish I was white because Spider-Man's white. And Jamon was like, there can be black superheroes as well, so he took a role as a black villain. I'm not entirely sure he thought that one through, but frankly, he isn't in the film all that much. He's I don't mind his character, but it's one of the things where I feel like he could have been combined with Nebula, who really we should see more of. Like I mentioned before, Nebula and Gamora have this great sibling rivalry thing going on, and yeah, they we should have had more time with that. And I also mentioned they're you know space pirates. Again, it's it's like the movie has so many different things that wants to tell us that they are all there, but a lot of them aren't that fleshed out. And it's it's still it's it's very fun, it's it's very fast paced, and it's impressive that it fits all that in, but I do think some of it if some of it had been trimmed and some of the other parts been fleshed out more that would really still have made it even better. Now, Lee Pace is the main bad guy, Ronan. He is an admiral of of Thanos. Actually, I think that's from the anyway, he's a big bad guy. He's working somewhat with Thanos. And he's this he's this religious religious fanatic psychopath where like he's you know he's got this giant hammer the hammer is his penis and he just 
like one of the first things we see him do is just use this hammer to just destroy a guy. We we don't really we don't see the hammer hit, but we we feel you know he hits the PG thirteen rating basically. Now the and this you know Michael Rooker and John C Riley have parts in this supporting parts in this and they're both really you know Michael Rooker is always awesome. Now, of all the comic book movies that have come out in recent memory, this is the one that I know the least about. But it is something where you can go into it without really knowing much about it, and you'll be able to follow it just fine. Now, the, the soundtrack of the movie and of Peter Quill is these pop rock classics from the 70s and 80s songs K-Bill you know DJing and basically Peter Quill brought it from from Earth and it's sort of his connection to Earth now the this had the best and most hilarious trailers in recent memory and as much as you know there was a lot of hype I have to say they it lived up to it and exceeded it I had high expectations and are blown away by it and it didn't the, the trailers didn't give away too much either now I haven't seen either of the other you know super and slither that James Gunn also wrote and directed, but I'm I'm told that this is very much him. This this big crazy kind of yeah. Now the effects and action are amazing, and the design work. There are some really compelling visuals in this. Now, the, it, it really does get across that, you know, basically part of the point here is that the Marvel Universe isn't just what happens on Earth. There's this whole, you know, galaxy beyond that. And, yeah, this gets that across very nicely. It, it does make the, the galaxy feel like a very varied place. Now... And there's there's this inspiration of Raiders of the Lost Ark and Star Wars, and yeah, they it's it's used really well. It it or it yeah it it works really well. It there's very much the feel of those classics, and yeah, this is this is probably one of the most you know sort of. I don't know if spiritual success is the right term, but it it follows along those, and not many movies today really live up to that, you know. And this does, I would say. There are like five different planets and a hundred different species of aliens in this. the The effects are largely practical, and it really pays off. It's always, you know, it, you can feel that it's there. Now, this is a standalone, but in the same universe as the Avengers, you know, yeah, all of those movies involving the Avengers. And in fact, this has fairly little of a link. I mean, the Collector is there, and yeah, the, the Infinity Stone, that's about it. There's almost nothing that's otherwise, yeah. Now, it's loaded with pop culture references, and it's it, it subverts a lot of expectations, and, all, you know, almost MST3Ks itself, where, like, Something that's really, 
yeah, it, it basically it says about itself what you might be thinking. Like when you first hear that literally Groot can only say I am Groot. Literally, you know, the the second time he says that, you know, Peter is like, can you really not say anything else? And then Raccoon explains, nope, you really can't. And Peter's like, that's going to get old fast. So, you know, the, the movie already knows that these things are, you know, it's, it's, it's wearing them on just on it on its face you know it's not shying away from them it's not trying to make apologies from saying yeah he all he says is I'm Groot so now the this there is a little bit too much going on too too many separate elements here to where it can it can be a little difficult to tell apart all the different elements and yeah it is only about two hours and yeah it, it does feel like there's almost too much in those two hours now all of the you know all the the five guardians have something to add, you know, something to bring to the team, and they have something compelling to do during the fight scenes and such. There are a lot of hints at something like someone's background and such that aren't explored. Now, I think that might be more or less it. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.